Well, so we have to do the knees with Mavi. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah. <laughs> what, what color is your top? Uh, looks. Uh, what do you think? I don't know colors. <laughs> That's what I'm, I know it's green, but it looks so different. It's green? Uh, uh, you know, though, is it? it? Mm. Okay, so we take it as that. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning to all of you, and um, it's good that we're back to do the newspapers. Absolutely. Uh, a lot of things are happening rather very quickly <laughs> with sex for grades. Uh, you know, uh, so <laughs> we will keep you updated. Definitely. I'm sure by now you've, uh, and Roland um, shared that release with you from the University of Ghana. Uh, but there are others, there's also some kind, some updates that we'll have to give you because on PM Express we had some great women uh, speak on the subject, but also uh, a woman who is central to the investigations uh, also speaking on PM Express will bring you up to speed with what is latest in terms of how the University of Ghana is reacting to the documentary produced by the BBC Sex for Greats. Mm. Mm. And in that interaction too, uh, we have um, uh, Professor Yanka. Professor Kwesi Yanka is a Deputy Minister of Education also in charge of tertiary uh, institutions. So He's a Minister sorry. of States. Okay, Minister of States. Yes. Fantastic. <laughs> right, Okay, so we have to. Oh no, no, but, but continue because I like the, the yeah. angle where you're coming. Yeah, because, you're coming from um, where he came from. Um, he um, is coming from a position of uh, us knowing the situation exists, uh, but not that the university or tertiary institutions in the country haven't taken steps. Uh, but also, the feature by the BBC or the documentary is just a continuation of the denigration of, of the African continent generally. And that also, he says, is another setback in, in, in lieu of all the things that have been mm. done so far, which in one part I agree with him, but also uh, we, we should have uh, make sure that we circulate the policy adequately for everybody to get to know, uh, even though it's there. It's been there apparently from 2010. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, so uh, if the students so don't know, on one part is their fault, and it, on the part of the administrators too, it's also their fault for the students. Hmm. There's a bigger issue of even even if you you know what the what the guidelines are and you, and you report what happens, you know, because after listening well, to, to the happen. student, you know, Nancy Mefajradosi was on campus as well as Maxwell Agbaba. They did a lot of interactions with some of the students, and I've been thinking about a lot about some of the things that they said and you know I can totally relate so somebody uh, for instance says that professors and teachers and lecturers are supposed to be are powerful really you know and uh, if you if you made an allegation how would it be treated because you've gone forward to report how can you even move free how 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 would it be treated i think I've it's seen even the situation with the national level if you have a whistleblower in an institution where the person feels safe Knowing that he's walking around without any protection. I have an experience even with a primary school in, in a you're, school that I'm not, in a teacher. school that I'm not going to mention. And it's not me as a parent but another parent where your child tells you something about what a teacher does. So you go to administration and you report. Uh, what hap what tend to happen and in this particular case, that teacher tells other teachers that about is. it and then they say, As for Roland's child, He's like a troubled child, you know, so don't go there, don't go there. So they kind of like eliminate your child simply because the child spoke out. Ostracized. And then they tell even teachers who are higher so that your child goes to either class one or grade one or whatever it is. And, and all the teachers already have isolated him and they say, this guy's a no-go area. You know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So it has, it, it could have some, um, some implications even in the future. Uh, so people think about a lot of things before they step forward. You know what I mean? I agree. Yeah. And then going by the explanations you're giving. So let's do the newspapers. Let's see uh, the other angles in the newspapers. I would do the Daily Graphic, the Ghanaian Times, the Finder, and the Daily Statesman. So the Daily Graphic newspaper, front page. Government releases 88 million Ghana CDs. It covers first semester of second year senior uh, high school students. There's a picture of Professor Kwesi Opukua Mankwa, Director General of the Ghana Education Service, says the government has released uh, 88,000, well, it's over 88 for disbursement to all public senior high schools for the implementation of the free senior high school program from the 2019 2020 academic year. The amount will, however, cover only second year students for the first semester. 
uh, Director General of the Ghana Education Service made this known in an interview the Daily Graphic yesterday. Uh, he said already 60, over 61,000 had been released for the upkeep of third-year students, uh, I guess for the academic, for the first semester. Uh, okay. Also on the front page, 3 million Ghana cities business pitch launched will on earth potential of students. There's Dr. Mohammed Ibrahim Awal, Minister of Business Development. Forex Bureau operator shot multiple times in critical condition. We brought you that story um, yesterday, it was. It was in our news. Um, yeah, but yeah. this is really worrying after listening to the details of this. The fact that uh, the people actually didn't take anything, mm. even though he had some money in his pocket, he didn't touch it. Mm. Is it like contract killing where they just aiming at him to kill him? Uh, you know, but lots of he's still in a critical away. condition yes. at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital, yes. former Ridge Hospital. Yeah. Upon Bueno as IGP president responds to Domahene's inquiry, also Railway Ministry investor sign agreement. So President Akufuado has said that. Uh, he has confirmed Mr. James Opombuenu as the Inspector General of Police. He explained that Mr. Opombuenu, uh, who was in acting position for some time, excelled in development, which he said informed the decision to confirm him. President Kufuado said this in response to an inquiry by the Domahene or Sajifo or Siadeyo Ajima Mbedu II during a Deba uh, the Doma Ahinkro Traditional Council held in the president's honor last Monday. The Doma Hene, while delivering his welcome address, uh, held as at the Deba, held as part of the president's two day official visit to the Bono region, had asked the president to confirm or deny information circulating on social media about the confirmation of the appointment of Mr. Opombuenu, to which the president responded, Yes, he has been confirmed. So he took a chief to ask if what was being rumored was true or not. I, I, I don't know, do we, do we simply just have a problem with communication? Because uh, we couldn't say it. Yesterday on Facebook, the police, on the, the police's uh, handle was congratulating him uh, for being confirmed as, as IG. But shouldn't there be and an having official, an extension an official communication to that effect? You know, shouldn't there be an official communication to that effect so that everybody... You mean like on a press statement? Yeah. Instead well, of everybody I else speculating, ah, for the Doma, he need to ask the president, you know, for him to confirm. I'm mm. just, yeah, because this yeah, is... I think prou proud to that, yes. Yeah, it should have, should been, have been a formal been. As soon as the, the, the man is confirmed, Because as of last be week, correspondents were speculating, yes. no, were reporting um, to us uh, on, on, on platforms that... There, w there was a meeting ongoing mm. for him to be confirmed yeah. and then an extension of already his extended period in office mm. because it's a, it's a, it's a novelty. Yeah, so. The back page of the Daily Graphic, uh, the Ministry of Environment, Science, Technology and Innovation has launched a project to complement national efforts at resolving the menace of plastic waste and marine litter. Uh, that full story is on the back page. Of the paper, Ghana German Development Bank signed some 16, um, 16 million euro deal. All right, that's also on the back page of the paper. Let's continue with the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Front page, on Athens student entrepreneurs, government set aside 3 million Ghana cities to support campus business pitch. Auditor General warns officials over public fund misappropriation. There's a picture of Mr. Daniel Domalovo, Auditor General on the front page of the paper. Sex for Great Saka, uh, Saga, UG Interdict, Professor Jampo and Dr. Butako. Also, police releases 13 demonstrators, 13 people who were arrested by the police for allegedly engaging in an illegal demonstration in Accra on Monday have been released by the Accra Regional Police Command. Guta accuses Nigeria of unfair trade practices. Full story, page 15 of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Well, in the center spread, President Ernst Tour of Bono Region inspects 10-kilometer road project at Sampa. Uh, uh, government sets aside three million. Well, that full story is in the center spread of the paper as well as this one. Uh, the U UG interdicts Professor Jampo and Dr. Butako. 
back page of the Times. We won't pay toll until we get a befitting market. Klo Agogo Traders Day Assembly. So traders at the Klo Agogo Market in the Yolo Krobo municipality in the Eastern Region have decided not to pay market toll to the Assembly effective Tuesday accusing the assembly of failure to improve upon the market as well as sanitation issues. The traders, with the support of their chiefs, have also vowed to resist any forceful attempt by the assembly to collect revenue from the market women until the market was properly reconstructed. Now, that's what happens if you fail to do your part of the bargain. The people would rise against you and there's nothing that you can do especially <laughs> when they have the support of the chiefs you mm. better fix the market so that they can resume paying their toll ngo builds four chips compounds with mm. uh, ancillary facilities for farming communities in thai another story on the back page of the paper you know we absolutely don't encourage people to go against the law uh, but when the people themselves feel that you're not doing what you're supposed to do, even though they are honoring their parts, you know, it will come a time when it will be impossible for you to do your work. Yeah. It, you, will be, you will be powerless, even though you've got authority. And it's the same thing that happens at the national level. Mm -hmm. We've seen uh, protests, um, we, we went to uh, Fix Lekmanau, and they had protested a section of the community who were mostly affected. And then we've seen others. Uh, there was one we went to at um, Ablekuma and, uh, and many other related areas. Oh, Already we've, we've seen in Takwa where they blocked roads. Exactly. Uh, Even currently, there are many pages I have cited on WhatsApp in which um, there are communities that are trying to mass up to protest mm. over some of the basic of the things. They may be expensive to construct, but at the end of the day, those are some responsibilities of the state. And once the state doesn't seem to be meeting its own responsibilities to its citizens, mm. it becomes a, a bone of contention. Yeah. And the, the surest way they think they have to draw your attention to what you need to do for them mm. is also by protesting. Because it looks like governments in the Fourth Republic uh, know about agitations before they act. Oh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. I, I believe yeah. foremostly that there need to be the line of communication where they can reach and dialogue. Yeah. And then you give them timelines. Those timelines need to be met. Even if you're not fixing the problems, yeah. you should explain to me uh, what you're doing and why I am not seeing results now. You should tell me what's in the pipeline. Don't they say pipeline, that pipeline that we never see? <laughs> you should tell me what's in the pipeline. <laughs> and then you know? the ones that get far advanced. Yeah. The plans being it, far advanced. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do the Finder newspaper, front page of the Finder. Uh, Three million Ghana cities fund launched to boost entrepreneurship among tertiary institutions or students. Uh, President Kofuado deserves a second term, according to the Sampa chief. And again, when I read uh, headlines like this, then I begin to ask myself, I thought we drew a line that chiefs shouldn't cross. Uh, two Legon lecturers suspended over sexual harassment accusation. CPP promises free tertiary education for all Ghanaians. All right, this is a curious case. It's on page five. Uh, free for all tertiary. Hmm. So let me read a bit of it. It says the government, the next government of the Convention People's Party will work hard to make sure that edu education from the basic to the tertiary level is made free. For all Ghanaians, Mr. James Kwame Nambonfe, genius, acting general secretary of the party, has said. Uh, he said the CPP would focus on building a solid human resource base that would be sensitive, responsible, and responsive enough to contribute significantly to the sustainable development of the country. Have you done free SHS? Um, no. You're, uh, you're asking who? Uh, have, you, uh, you, have you done uh, the graphic? The graphic says government has now released uh, um, to cover the first semester of second year students. Yes, this is only second year because they say they released uh, a little over 60... Um, no, we don't understand. For no, I just want years. him to avert his mind to oh, the fact that what is involved, the cost that yeah. is involved in this. <laughs> because even the releases don't come on time, so he should hasten slowly. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not sure. You know, he's and then and then tertiary institutions were up to which level? Like, only public. Ah, this is basic to tertiary. Yeah. Which one don't you understand? Uh, Free for all. And tertiary institutions, you which just one? Private or both, or, or both oh, public and it private. It couldn't be private. 
it could only be public. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking it could only be public. You don't have control over the private, the private universities. No, but and they're also it's Ghanaian it's citizens. Yes, and if, but if they can have access, mm. uh, due to the inability of the public to provide them space to study or give them admission opportunities, then it also means that they also deserve because we all pay taxes. It's obviously more expensive to do that because they are more expensive. Well, yeah. so the equivalent that you use in subsidizing the public, you can give it to the public. So I'll the, choose the to go to Ashesi and, then I'll pay and the let rest. CPP pay for oh, me. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, so they'll still give you the equivalent that is used. Oh, as then you subject. top up. Yeah. Then you top up. Okay. It should, it should be Let's do enough. the Daily Statesman newspaper front page of CPP the statement. Government. That's the last paper for me. Roland will do the rest. <laughs> uh, open up professional legal training in Ghana. That's the hashtag is on the front page of the Daily Statesman newspaper. Springfield start drilling in West Cape three points. Well, there's some information that we're getting uh, on this uh, professional legal training in Ghana, some reforms that government is seeking to do. Uh, but I won't let, let anything out. I'll just say mm. stay tuned, like listen and watch PM Express uh, later this evening. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, Karen for the people, Action Aid endorses Ecofuado's pro poor policies. That's the Daily State Man newspaper. Okay, let me do the... The Ghanaian Observer has a first paper. The Ghanaian Observer has a story. Sex for great scandal. UG interdicts Professor Jampo Butako. Down there we have Amidu Dare's parliament over interference. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I'll let you in you know, on what uh, the latest epistle from the stables of Martin Amidu, special prosecutor is. And the issues he's raising in that uh, letter. Uh, minister fights for a Kufuado second term bid. Okay, let's go to the Daily Guide. The Daily Guide has on the front page, motor riders gun down man on Kanda Highway. And the victim is Abdul Kadir Mohammed. We're told that he's currently in a critical condition mm. at the Greater Accra Regional Hospital. We brought you that story as well. Uh, deal with mass failure of law students. Nana tells Chief Justice. And the Chief Justice of Fire Kufo is also pictured there as well as the President. Ghost forces school shut down. NCA hit Supreme Court again. And what is it about? Uh, you have ongoing trial. Uh, it's a case involving four former board members of the National Communications Authority, including uh, the MDO Director General at the time. That would be, um, yeah, William Tete Tefi. Okay. So we have on the back page appear on Europe's scouting mission, which appear not Stephen appear, Kwesi appear. Good morning, Jibuza Kwesi appear. Scouting uh, he's still who? Our co <laughs> no, he's scouting Europe. No, but he's still our manager, right? He, yeah, yeah, he's still ah, our okay. manager. All right, we didn't fire him after. Mm, mm, okay, mm. all right. And Benedict also after should, Afcon. After Afcon, we uh, should have even, fired him. Even, even, even. Well, yeah, man. we are not Egypt, are we? We didn't dissolve anything. <laughs> and uh, apparently the normalization committee is set to postpone FA elections according to uh, the Daily Guy Sports. We'll ask Benedict also how true this is. We, we hear it. And then FA investigate Jordan attackers and some things were thrown at Jordan AU when they secured a 2-1 win uh, in London. You know, Crystal Palace pretending and they won. Mm. Let's go to the Daily Dispatch. On the front page of the Daily Dispatch newspaper, we have analysis of 200 constituencies, uh, part four, Ododo Dio Dio, NDC's Neil Ante Van, Van der Poy, uh, likely to beat MPP's Neil Ante, again, we're talking Neil Ante Bannerman and Neil Ante Van der Poy. Look, <laughs> you get to find that most of their, their relatives, uh, the MPP and NDC candidates are always from all of the, that constituency over the last four elections or so. Uh, Dr. Evans Anfum celebrates 100 years. Housing conditions in Ashanti, Volta, and former Bono regions, all the statistics available for you in the Daily Dispatch. And I paid part of $2,800 loan in kind. A woman is telling a court where? In Nigeria. No, say that again. I paid what? I paid part of $2,800 loan in kind. 
woman tells court. <laughs> Can you read a little bit? I, like, I'm curious to know in kind, like, how. Okay. So uh, she said, although she was giving the law, she also delivered some bags of rice to the complainant with an understanding to pay up the balance. Okay. So not mm. that kind of in kind, like... And so she said, besides, the defendant informed the court that even before she was given the loan by the complainant, she had to pay him in kind on three different occasions in what? a hotel. Uh, is that part of the story? Yeah, it's part of the story. Okay, because it's just your mischief, uh, 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 no, the I way was, you were reading, I, I think I was wondering. And then I you said ba ba bags of yeah, rice. Yeah, I was de delivering it slowly. So bags of rice mm. in, the, in the hotel room no, and then in cash. First, bags of rice. <laughs> And then in kind. What did the agreement say? What did they <laughs> sign? That you can pay me back in kind? Well, they signed a normal loan <laughs> with the bank. <laughs> but then there was a kind part. <laughs> was it with the bank or representatives of the bank? Yeah. So <laughs> this one, you, she's still going to pay to the bank. No, I that didn't. kind of payment. <laughs> this is and this one is happening. It's it says, a Lagos-based businesswoman, Ijioma, uh, Ahibafu, the 49-year-old uh, person, mm. has told an Ojo magistrate court how she paid back $2,800, equivalent of 1.1 million naira loan she mm. allegedly took from a man. And she says um, she says she was giving the loan. Uh, she said although she was giving the loan, she mm -hmm. also delivered some bags of rice to the complainant. Mm -hmm with an understanding to pay up the balance. Okay. Then she said that she informed the court that even before she was given the loan by the complainant, she had to pay him in kind. Even before the loan? Yeah. Okay, no, that doesn't count, does it? On three different occasions. Uh, but there was an agreement. No, but even, befo even before, the, even before the loan, is the loan we're talking about. <laughs> At what point did the loan come in? <laughs> Oral. But it would be interesting to see what, in what, what, what the court's decision is. <laughs> hey. How much would a round cost? <laughs> In kind, <laughs> and it, it was uh, look, viewers, it was at a hotel. I, I love this part. Rola, Rola, are you reading the story or you're adding yours to it? No, it was at a hotel. Okay, so just read what you see. <laughs> are you okay, so the prosecutor said, mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Uche had earlier told the court that the defendant obtained a loan of 1.14 for her rice business from one Emma, a business uh, man, with mm -hmm. a promise to pay back the money in six months. Mm -hmm. Now, that's the formal agreement, and mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mama so before okay. before she, went, it, you she done? paid in kind, uh, let let okay. people let people read the rest of this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's um, uh, look at the today newspaper. It has an interesting headline, and it uh, it says Gabby jubilates over sex for grades expose. I don't know. It was just following up on uh, uh, a message that was posted on Gabby's uh, page on Facebook and also handle on Twitter. Quite interesting if you tend to look at the interpretation that the, the today newspaper has given to the post of uh, Mr. Gabi Asari Otridako. Good morning to you, Gabi. Uh, review MPS concession deal. TUC and MDC urge government. And we, we're hoping I get permission of um, my producer so that we bring the freight forwarders and their association represented to come and raise some of their concerns here, right here on the show. Uh, let's go to the new publisher newspaper, has a main story, uh, sex for great expose, confusion at Legon. And in Ghana, when we say Legon, we're talking about the premier university. The new publisher should be on the screen. It's going to be on the screen. So the new publisher says, sex for great expose, confusion at Legon. In Ghana, when we say Legon, we mean the investor. Well, and uh, we know. Let's do my jawline.com <laughs> before we cross over for, for sports. Okay, so let's do my jawline.com. Yeah. You know, there's a poem that I, I learned back in school. Obidia Bobidia Nam. Hina na wadi machina sem. E ding a e ye me deni obidia ba. Is that what you're already on? on let's my do my jawline.com court acquits Dr. Obim for the Accra Circuit Court. Four on Tuesday acquitted Dr. Dominic Kwame Obing Ando, the proprietor of the Obimfo Hospital located at Wager in Accra. Is that the end of all the allegations uh, and finger pointing? Sex for great accused lecturers breached our code of ethics, according to the University of Ghana. Uh, on the face of the evidence contained in the BBC documentary, accusing two of its lecturers of sexual harassment, the tutors breached university policy well later this morning we will hear 
uh, from the chairperson of the Committee of Anti-Sexual Harassment Committee of the University of Ghana, who spoke on uh, PM Express last night. Still on our page. Uh, there's a video, one, one V one D project abandoned in Savlugu after sword cutting. One village, one dam. Ghana needs national anti-sexual harassment policy, according to human rights lawyer and activist uh, Francis Sosu. Uh, committee investigating sex for grades invite past students to testify. So this is this turning to be more like Me Too, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think it should turn into Me Too. Sometimes we need the headlines in this regard. Italy reduces the size of parliament to save a billion uh, euro in a decade. And when I first heard the story yesterday, I was thinking, oh my God, are we watching and learning or we're just observing what did you say again in ghana Nothing. africa Sub-Saharan <laughs> africa sex for grades documentary bad for higher education in africa according oh. to professor yanka uh 11 from this senior high school girls collapsed after strange events school closed down we'll speak to our colleague uh albert sorry because this is you know the whole story about this is very strange they said that girls act in a certain way, in a very strange way, some said they saw ghosts, somebody pulling them, you know, very mysterious things coming out of the school. We'll get in touch with Albert Sorry to get a better understanding of what's been happening in the senior high school. This is where we have to end the review. We'll bring you sports in a bit, but a very good morning to Mr. Alexander Kwekwobing. I hope that you're doing well, sir. Yeah. Yeah, that's DSP Obing. Yes. Good morning to you, sir. And our I friend Michael Ameni in the UK, he sent me a very heartbreaking oh. message. Is he coming to Ghana? We don't check on him. That's the that's Oh, Michael it. Ameni. But we don't. Stay with us. We'll bring you sports. UK. Benedict and is then, up next. Um, Roland, it's Boku, okay. Boku it's okay. Boku I've done one dedication.